my finest work. Ah! And they're gonna see this here. Smoke's been popped, but they already make the commitment for Bulldog. EGM tries to get there, but he is so far away. Bulldog is gonna be able to turn the corner under the tower, but Quickfoot makes a timber chain jump. Shockman flies out. Bulldog's still good. He's going for the TP here, and oh, he's not gonna be able to get it. Ends up going down. S4 who rotated, and also gonna be going down. Double kill for Quickfoot. They look for error. They will get that one, though by the Loda spin, and it looks like a follow-up Cinder kill could be in order, but Magic Missile does slow down Loda. In the meantime, Koifa gets the triple as it cleans up EGM. Yapsor, though, slashed apart by Loda. Loda will try to run his way. Phase Boots will give him a bit of speed, but Yapsor tries to hide, turn around, and can't totem stun, slows him down, and a Fissure, man, he's making Loda they sweat for it here. Ult, but the MP ult, as mentioned, will bop him on the head. He goes down. Sindarin deep in enemy territory, waits for the mana to get a TP, but he will make it out safely. And when the dust does settle... Now they have Zeus ult. Augmented a little bit, so he will go for the force. Well, can't really fault the guy. This guy's come up with like three or four different Nature's Prophet standard builds yeah. <laughs> throughout Dota time. And oh, dive behind the tower for Sindarin. He will end up going down fast. There's going to be the Omni. Loda will end up finishing off Yapsor. Now they're looking for Era. This is a tremendous sweep happening for Alliance. Can they make it four? Yes, they can. Alliance take four. They lose nothing. And they are seriously on a hot streak here. If Escape were feeling like they were winning the what network game, swap? they got to fall behind here. I mean, global factor too. They don't even need to be as five for half the time they want to make these kind of engagements or counterplays oh here. Oh my goodness. Hi, EGM everybody. With yeah, the sorry. Smoke pop. You shall not pass. Counterfeasure play here, but Alliance still controlling the territory nicely. Center lets them know, pops out the wave. And this is a bit of an awkward approach from Escape, but they're still thinking they want to contest. There's the blink in. Azu gets the crush. Man, he gets blown the hell up with that Fade Bolt and extra magical burst. Alliance will be able to finish off the Roche. Lotus snags up the Aegis, and it turns into a double as they get the finish on Cinderin. Forces the rest of Escape gaming to, well, escape the hell out of it. Prophet. That's a very easy way to initiate, whereas Escape, like, they have to wait for, like, three heroes to clump up. They can't get hit by an Arc Lightning from the Zeus or a Zeus Ultimate or an NP Ultimate. And they have to be careful that Jug doesn't see them and just kill them. Okay, there's a swap back to bring Loda very deep here. This is only for the Aegis, though. And they might look to take a big fight at the second round here. Era waltzes on in as if he wants to dish out his Sunder. Pops his BKB. Yapsor dishes out the Echo. You Loda very low. Gets off the Omni Slash and Alliance. Re go into the base for round number two. Loda will be able to play three away and get to the grave for the extra safety measures. But it's going to be Escape who do lose two. And this allows Alliance to clean up the racks. He went to Zeko even without like all the all the other crap that was going to hit him. He didn't get his blink disabled. He just got blinked out right before. and. Oh, Kezu goes in, and he gets trapped up into the Sprout, eats the one tree, but is still pinned in, and will pay the price. That makes it three now. Alliance continue to make their climb, and for escape, things looking very grim in this game number one. I don't think we've ever seen a slaughter be so useless in a game. It's actually quite astounding to see. And was not able to really kind of be that enforcer in the mid-game period. Was oh, a bit off the mark of being able to get the faster blink timing, but yeah, uh, I I don't know. I mean, Era d definitely can muscle down towers fast, but it looks like that's not going to be the choice for them. They hurry back to the base as Loda begins his siege on the tier three. They're trying to best to slow him down. Yapsor will leave things off with an early fissure, but Loda continues his assault. Chakram will poke at him a bit, but he's got plenty of help behind in the form of Aki with that dazzle heal. His weave, nice little early one kind of set the stage for any sort of potential skirmish. A quick blink back to avoid the shock room. He gets some good damage onto that melee Rax, but something has to be done here from Escape if they want to survive. But they're all split up on the lines. It's yeah. the, the blink initiators can only get one hero, if even one hero. As we see there, you know, Ezu just kind of lightly tickles Loda, but there's no, uh, and that's going to even prolong the blinks. They can't do anything to stop him. No, nothing for you. No Echo Slam. No clustered approach. Here comes Alliance going for the final set of racks. There's an early swap, but Loda is going to be able to play Fury, avoid the trouble, gets himself back out towards his team. You see how much damage our reflection does? He, like, that's the, yeah. the first time I've seen him use it on Loda in a really long time. Took him down to half. Yeah. It, he hurts, and he has to, like, he, like, scotties himself. Mm -hmm. It's, it's pretty good, but... When he's spun, no chance. And he has a lot of evasion, so at this point, Reflection not going to do too much damage to him anyways. But wait for spin. Wait for your scepter. Two minutes left on Aegis. This is it. Here we go. Can't escape. Hold the final round here.
from Alliance installed this one out in hopes that maybe they could find their way to creep back into this game or will Alliance close out a wonderful performance pretty much from them by from top to bottom. This game has been pretty much theirs from the get-go. Not really at any point was Escape Gaming in the positive as far as net worth goes. Here's Alliance already, 25k plus, and there it is. This could be a swap back again for Loda. There's a the reflection, man. He's getting low, but they got the preemptive great for him. There goes the T-Gods. Everyone very low, going to be forced back in away. This tier three is to drop. And now uh, with the Sunder, Era can, you know, live to fight on, but Alliance get what they need, reposition, and we'll go again for potentially the exposed set of racks. Yep, reset with the healing ward, everyone's at full HP. They did not even get the Aegis on Loda, and with one hero in the grave with the T3 already fallen, it's a foregone conclusion. They still have Echo, but again, Alliance, with their wonderful positioning, there's just no easy target. They just might have to settle or be at risk of just being going into Megas. So what are they gonna do about it? They move in, there's a stun. Loda says, no thank you, goes right to Omni Slash now, jumps back it away. Tries the best to thwart things off with the Lotus Orb. Double Telekinesis, that looks funny, but nonetheless, it quickly is short-lived. And uh, Alliance will double back and see that Koipa is trying to make a retreat out. Drawing their attention away from the base, I suppose. But that will be the first game, Ben. And it goes to Alliance. Hey, Zeus, not a bad answer for the Nature's Prophet. You put that together with all the extra global presence, the wonderful farm from Bulldog and Loda as well. They make it look oh, easy. And Flame Break here coming out. Bulldog, whoa, skims right past him here. Very awkward position. Going to get Telekinesis up. Now eating a lot of Brute Force here. But there is going to be stop from EGM, which saves him in the meantime. But they got that glimpse. That was stolen. They bring him right back into the open arms, and they will take him down. His dead body very awkwardly flies in the skies and dissipates. But the Absor saved up from the shallow grave as they trek into the Alliance territory here. Alliance backtrack a bit, but... Uh, it looks like they still do not want to let Escape get the easy Roche. Yep, they still have a Stomp at the ready for Elder Titan into an ulti, and they have Disruptor ulti as well. This could be... Ooh, they got it back out of the pit. They're all clumped in there. Oh, but there's bear the Stomp. Dead. 300 gold. They still want to fight. They feel that they're pretty confident because Zoo could be the gatekeeper with his Ravage. But now with the buyback, they head up north. S4 makes his move. They're going to go ahead and cancel out the Siphon with the help of the Roar. But there's going to be another potential stomp set up. It will catch Yapsor and the bear. Earth Splitter will fly. Ooh, a good position potentially to catch, but only hits Yapsor. Now they go ahead and get the lasso pullback. There's our Ravage. We've been waiting for it. And now there's going to be the break apart. Flame Break, Stacks from going to be dropped. Kazoo's going to be stuck in the middle of it. The first one to go down is going to be Era along with Ake. And now they look for more. Bulldog makes takes for Kazoo. Changes course. They find the easier target. And that's going to be Cinderin. And uh, Escape actually doing a little bit of kite play from both fronts. We'll be able to get the finish on EGM and the follow-up kill. Taking down Bulldog, leaves Loda at his own. Tries to go for Quickfoot, but he gets saved up from the grave. And now it's Loda, who's all alone. Escape Gaming will be able to get a five-man wipe and then be able to go back for what they started inside the pit. Huge fight for them. Finally, Kezu comes up big with that Ravage, Disruptor. Terrorblade. Already going to get this tier 3 to about half of its life, and no response yet here from Alliance, but they're waiting. They have the Infest Bat ready to go, EGM in position, Static Storm ready, but uh, also we have backliners here for Escape, like Kazoo waiting for the Ravage. There's a <laughs> setup by Bulldog, but he's not going to be able to get the lasso catch. Stomp is there, Flame Break back, S4 goes to the Spirit Siphon, will be able to catch the bear, but there's that new Blade Mail, and uh, Quick Savage Roll will help them step back. Escape will pull out and uh, be walking away with a nice takedown of the melee racks plus tier 3. And Bulldog, who made a commitment in, almost going to be caught in trouble there. Stackstorm will help kind of create a bit of a space as Loda looks to square up against the, the bear, but the bear gets saved with the shallow grave. Now the Ravage is going to be dodged by S4 with the Yules as the Exorcism will begin to fly out. Era looks to isolate Aki, but Era's going to be all alone. Gets the Sunder off for Loda, but they quickly take him down and right-click him apart. And that means Escape are going to have to hightail it the hell out of here. S4, not going to be able to cancel that TP. Needed more Which time. Will be easy with the Elder Titan down and escape smell blood. Here As comes Bulldog. Alliance. Yeah, they've smoked up and for a wraparound play, there's the quick buyback. Oh, Bulldog can't get in for the last. So gets Telekinesis up and now he looks to wreak a retreat down south. Stackstorm is going to be committed as Era looks to make his move for S4. There's going to be the Ravage play. EGM, who just bought back quickly, going to be bursted potentially down. Still is. Loda goes down first. And this is going to be all escape, it looks like here. Double kill for Koikpa as they quickly drop three. They only lose their, their tide, but he was able to get the Ravage off. And uh, well, the gem will pass hands only on the same side of escape. And S4 also. Telkinesis pull back. He's also taken down. That's going to be four. 
Escape now can easily make their ascension into the high ground and go for their next tier three. Oh, that was such a poor initiation by Bulldog yet again. That's the second time that that's happened. He's tried to blink in and then he's gotten lifted up by Rubik. Yeah, it happened on a T3 on bottom. Now it's happened on the T2 on top. And he has a Shadow Blade on top of that. Like he could have built a PKB and almost had a guaranteed initiation because he also has to deal with a Savage Roar, but with the Shadow Blade pickup and not being able to get a jump like that, that will be game over. Yep. Tier 4s, as it looks like Escape are going to be going for the Jugular on this one. Still 10 seconds before leaving. Loda is going to be back here. And I don't know if the support staff is going to be good enough to be able to stop this assault. Escape, though, going to be confident and happy, at least with what they've gotten, and look like they're going to be stepping out here. Bulldog, one more second. We'll at least have a lasso. Doesn't think it's going to be necessary here for, for the little Yapsor kill, but the damage, it has been done. Oh, he's not They little. make their move up. They slowly poke at it a bit. It is funny to mention that, though. I mean, EGM is, was typically their, their Visage player, too. So I know he has micro skills for sure, but we'll have to see. Bear in. That's, oh, that could be the last bear. Are they going to grave it? Oh, my goodness. If only you could glimpse that thing. <laughs> they would they would have glimpsed it right there if you could have. Oh, for sure. <laughs> that bear is mega important. He's alive, though. And they're still sending him in. Oh, quick pull back for the tick. And they're flirting with it here. Oh, the other lanes are beginning to come in. This is getting a bit awkward for Alliance, and they're one rack's hold. But Arab begins to have a siege here. Tier 3 now at about half of its life. What can Alliance do to stop Escape? Escape are on their way to pushing this into a game number 3. But there goes Alliance. They're going to get the lasso pullback, trying to get a hold of Cinderin. But of course, Bulldog is going to get shut in his place. There's going to be the pop-up of the package. Cinderin does have to force a self-grave here to stay alive and reposition. But they get what they need. The tier three goes down. And now S4 has a hard commitment outside the base here. Looking to make it go for the bear. But now self-fuels into a ravage setup from Kezu. Era also very low, but he gets the Sunder, and it's only on a low life EGM. It's enough, though, to get the kill. Ake can't get the finish yet. Era doubles back, and finally they'll be able to take the Aegis down. S4 still alive here on the back end of his Exorcism. Might be able to keep him back up and well. Doubles back inside the base. Now briefly forced forward. Tries to hustle back, but it looks like they are slowly running down on resources here and being able to hold off the mighty Escape Gaming here in game number two. Bulldog Shadow Blade makes his way back towards the base, but finally they get a hold of S4, and he still is able to get the Yules off. Lodo makes his move in, trying to truck down Era here, but he's quickly swarmed up by Bear and all these illusions. He can't really find his way towards the, the meat and bones of this fight, and eventually will get muscled apart. A buyback is going to be forced out. Escape, decide to change course, go for the objectives now. These racks are falling, the Megas are out, and the game has been called. We're going to a game number uh. three. Based on the approach that they make, it could be left to be desired here by Escape if they don't get a good start. And there's going to be the jump. There's the gush. They're looking to go for Ake. Ake gets the blinding light off, but now they'll be able to focus him down. Both supports will be dropped here. They lost, Loda yep. makes a go for Cinderin. Cinderin gets the cold embrace, but Loda's determined to get the finish there. Will be able to do it. Goes into Shadow Dance. Looks to size it. Bulldog makes his approach, and they're able to get the Yapsor down. Hezu catches both S4 and Bulldog with the Ravage, but they're able to shrug that one off. Go for the Watermelon Man and be able to slice him up and ladder him up for a future picnic but nonetheless Loda with a triple kill and that was escape making the approach in the initiative truck in and S4 says we gotta go oh canceled out nice stolen roar from Yapsor will lock him in his place the follow-up ravage will be there but the damage is it available they're eating a lot and S4 will be able to jump away almost be able to get the catch it's Loda for the Rubik, and they're not done yet. Boom, finger, connection, Winter's Curse turnaround. It's gonna be too late to save the Koi for Death Prophet, and S4 is back and just as mighty. He looks to go, finds Kazoo, it looks like they'll be able to slash him down, and it's a double kill for S4. Obviously, S4 will be able to slip out. Yep, he doesn't have the Aegis, so, or he does have the Aegis, so he doesn't wanna commit Ravage to him. Uh, not anymore. <laughs> so now is their best chance if Escape wanna try to take a fight while the Aegis is down. Loda finishes off the racks. We'll have to pop his BKB to make it out safely, and EGM's already kind of starting things down this mid lane. It's GG. over. Okay. It looks like Escape Gaming have recognized that their backs are too far against the wall, and there's really no opening. And with the way the game was going, Alliance just continued to just build up and bulk up and bulk up while Escape can't even get out the front door.